Hello, friends, and welcome to this episode of Lockdown Winnipeg Jets. We are going to be talking about some NHL 2022 playoff action, uh, all coming up from this past weekend. We'll talk about which series have really caught me by surprise, which ones may not be all that surprising, and uh, what we might expect from the next few games as these teams really trade blows and honestly give us some very unpredictable t- twists and turns. We'll also talk about the Manitoba Moose against the Milwaukee Admirals in their playoff series and what has gone so terribly wrong for the Baby Jets. All coming up on tonight's episode of Locked On Winnipeg Jets. Or Locked On the Hockey Jets, your daily podcast on the Winnipeg Jets. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, friends, and happy Monday. Welcome to this episode of Locked On Winnipeg Jets, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm your host, Harrison Lee, an avid Winnipeg Jets fan and an online blogger. You can follow me on Twitter at HLivingLoco and at LO underscore Winnipeg Jets. Thank you for making Locked On Jets your first listen of the day. If you enjoy what you're hearing, be sure to like, follow, and subscribe on your favorite podcasting platform of choice, including Apple, Spotify, Google, Megaphone, Odyssey, and YouTube. Doing so is completely free of charge and ensures you never miss another episode. But most of all, we just really love and appreciate your support. Tonight's episode is brought to you by Bet Online. Uh, They've got all the odds you need with more props, odds, and lines than ever before for this season and playoffs, no matter what sport you're into. Bet Online, it's where the game starts. On tonight's episode, like I did mention before, I wanted to talk about the, uh, the NHL playoffs. But before we do that, I wanted to go into the Manitoba Moose series because. This is the closest playoff action Jets fans are going to have unless you're bandwagoning an opposing team or one of the other squads out there that you maybe hate a little bit less. Uh, The Moose, (laughs) it's not been a good playoff run, man. Uh, The first two games they have dropped, I think the first one was a 3-2 loss, and the second one was a 2-1 loss. Um, Both games have very similar issues in that, uh, unfortunately for the Moose, they only make a handful of mistakes per game but those mistakes end up, end up getting punished pretty harshly. Um, the ads have been pretty bad, I'll be honest. Uh, Milwaukee is basically just kind of relying on their goalie. I think his name is Devin Cooley. Uh, this guy came into the series sporting, I don't know, a sub-900 save percentage as far as I know. Uh, not exactly clear starter material, um, and I think most Moose fans were probably thinking if Askarov signed, we would be seeing him in that, which is pretty scary, right? Uh, It probably seems even scarier now that we're seeing Cooley essentially stonewall Manitoba. The Moose have vastly outshot and outchanced their opponents, um, sometimes by a factor of two. Uh, It's been crazy, right? Like they had the the one game over the weekend where they had, I don't know, 42, 43 shots on goal, maybe even more than that. um, And they only scored one goal, right? Uh, the, The theme of this series has definitely been a lack of finishing talent, which isn't super shocking. I also think that the coaching staff has tried to adjust for that with some odd decisions. We saw power plays or, or extra man situations where there were a few too many defenders for my liking. I know that guys like Ivanki, Chisholm, Heinola, yada, 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 all of these guys are great scorers uh, from the blue line in their own right. But if you're, say, in a, a six on five situation, you need to tie the game. Maybe don't rely on your blue liners as much. Use your forwards. I think that is... Look, I, I get it. The forwards for this team, they don't exactly have the world's greatest uh, finishing talent or release. But the reality is forwards are rock drilled to know where to be on the ice. They have a better sense of positioning, especially around the slot and net. And so when those opportunities and second chance rebounds pop up, they're more likely to capitalize on it. I think that's the biggest thing. If they're if there are guys who are used to being almost entirely on offense, you know, most of the most of the time, I think it's natural uh, natural to accept that they will probably be, you know, the more likely guys to score. I get it. You know, the Moose don't have a lot of great forwards, but rather than asking your blue liners who would essentially be doing stuff that's outside of their typical role, especially with the man pulled um, or the goalie pulled in this in this situation, I, I don't really feel like putting out a few extra defenders is going to make the difference. We saw this happen on like a power play last year with the Moose. Uh, I think it probably happened more than once um, under Pascal Vincent. Doesn't really result in goals for. Um, 
So yeah, I would prefer if the moose not do that, lean on your forwards and just kind of accept that there's a good chance you're not going to score. I think the moose, unfortunately, have found the limit of how far they can push it without having guys like Perfetti in tow. Um, Manitoba still has a chance to claw back in the series, but it's a best of five and they've already dropped two games. So unless they can really reverse their their fortunes at home, I don't really see how they claw back into this. Uh, it's really unfortunate because this Moose team was probably one of the more offensively gifted teams uh, that we've seen recently. They had no problems creating opportunities, but uh, unfortunately converting those chances has kind of been few and far between and against the ads who have basically just relied on their goalie and then hit back on like two or three counters. It's been enough. I mean, that's, that's the truth of it. It's been really depressing to say, but you know, the moose, they might be out of this a lot sooner than I expected. And uh, you know, the goaltending hasn't really been great. Uh, the defensive coverages when they unfortunately made a few key errors has not been great. Dylan Sandberg looks really rusty uh, returning to the moose. Jonathan Kovacevic has not really been helping him as his partner. Um, so yeah, really tough breaks. I don't know how the Moose are supposed to to get back into this series unless they have a really great home stand. But my guess is, series is going to be over before they leave Manitoba. Uh, I wish I had uh, better news to report, but I just feel like with how things have gone, and you know, the fact that the Moose problems aren't likely to get resolved before the end of the series, I just don't see how they make it through this. Uh, Perfetti's loss is probably one of the more frustrating things. I think they would probably have hoped to see a really big performance from him. Uh, but you know, some of the guys like Christian Veselainen, uh, Veselainen just seems like he's there. I, I really feel like, you know, whatever they've done with him over the past several years, urgency, uh, hunger to score, some of that stuff hasn't really been there. Um, and they've also tried to like turn him into a two way power forward at the NHL level. I also don't really see that, see that as his game. So uh, when you're kind of turning to guys like CJC's Greg Morales and uh, some of the other players to be your top scorers, it might not be enough if you run into a really hot goalie, which is what the Moose are facing. So let's just hope that they can turn it around. It'd be nice if the baby Jets could keep on going. Uh, and, you know, Otherwise, we're not going to have any Jets related hockey to talk about for the time being. It's going to be uh, a long wait until next season. So Let's root for the Moose. Let's hope they pull things back in and uh, they can continue the series and maybe advance past this round. Um, but that is uh, all the Jets updates that we have so far. I did want to pivot now and talk about the NHL playoffs because those have been a lot more exciting, especially for neutral observers. But before we talk about those, I do want to shout out the folks at BetOnline. I mentioned them at the start of the episode. Uh, they really are your number one source for all of your betting stats and sports info. Whether you're looking for the latest sports developments, league reviews, news, rumors, whatever it is you're into, uh, including like basketball playoffs, uh, the start of the Major League Baseball season, all of the horse racing odds from the Kentucky Derby, no matter what, BetOnline has you covered. Even if you're not into sports, they've also got Vegas casino games. Um, I know a lot of you probably don't have as, as, much, as, uh, as much of a vested interest in non-sports stuff, but look, it's there for you, even if you get tired of F1 international football, hockey, no matter what, BetOnline really is your number one source for all of your online betting needs. They've also got uh, live sporting, wagering information, playoff info and updated odds, esports, and so much more. Getting started with them really couldn't be easier. Just go to register for an account on your laptop or mobile device at BetOnline.net. It's really easy to get started. I've even used it, and I don't even do online betting, but I found it very simple and very straightforward. So go to BetOnline. It's where the game starts. Hello, friends, and welcome back to this episode of Locked on Winnipeg Jets. We are about to jump into the updates on the Stanley Cup playoff series that are currently underway for round number one. Before we go any further, though, just wanted to say thanks so much for making Locked on Jets your first listen of the day every day. While you're at it, be sure to check out Locked on Now. It's our daily program giving you all of the most important sound bites from around the league, featuring key takeaways from our local experts on the latest news, trades, rumors, whatever your team is into, we've got it in really bite-sized digestible chunks so you get the most important thoughts on each moment for your favorite sports team. Be sure to give them a free follow and a subscription on your favorite podcasting platform of choice. You can find them on all the same platforms that we are. Uh, it's, it's free. And again, we really appreciate your support. So check them out right now. As far as the NHL playoffs are concerned, yeah, uh, we're going to start off with the Western Conference because I feel like this one has probably been uh, 
I, I wouldn't even say the more predictable one. Um, the only series that I would say is very straightforward and to the point is Colorado versus Nashville. This one, Colorado has taken a commanding 3 nothing lead, and for the most part, they've basically outplayed Nashville at, at almost all situations. Uh, the Preds really don't have a hope in heck of, of getting through this. Colorado has steamrolled them. They've gotten past Connor Ingram, who has done his best to try and replace Yusuf Saros, but I think the loss of Saros is unfortunately something that the Preds can't really compensate for. Uh, even with Saros, it seems like it would have been really hard to get through the series. The Preds aren't scoring a lot, and Colorado has this sort of offense where if you start getting undisciplined and start taking penalties, or even just make a simple mistake at even strength, the Avs are going to kill you. And I think Nashville has found it the hard way that, you know, considering where they are in the process of the of their retooling, or I guess their partial rebuild, they're still a ways off from even approaching a team like the Avs. And I think that's not going to change anytime soon. So bit of a tough start for them. Uh, they'll probably get bounced pretty quickly. Even if they scratch out a win, it's just a matter of time for, for Nashville. And I think we all know that Colorado, when it comes to Western Conference teams, is probably the cream of the crop. From here, though, the playoff picture becomes a lot less predictable. Uh, in the second series, we've got Minnesota versus St. Louis. This one is tied 2-2 um, on account of a Sunday afternoon game in which uh, after losing two straight decisions to the Wild, or the uh, the St. Louis Blues clawed back a really dominant 5-2 victory, which is not super shocking. I think we know that uh, both of these teams are really talented, very good, very defensively sound. Um, and offensively, they're both surprisingly effective. I think the Blues are, are for me, the better offensive, uh, offensive outfit, but... You know, the Wild have gotten really important contributions ever since the arrival of Kirill, of Kirill Kaprizov. Uh, you know, Matt Zuccarello still lending his expertise. Yol Eriksson Ek doing as much as he can, despite being more of like a defensively oriented center. Um, yeah, I mean, the Blues, though, uh, this is a tough series because I feel like for me, St. Louis is going to prevail, but it's going to take at least seven games. Um, I can't see the series really getting resolved before then. I feel like it'll have to go the full seven. They, they're just too evenly split in so many areas, and I feel like unless you know somebody starts really screwing up, it's going to go the distance, and I, I would say it's a coin flip, right? Minnesota might be able to take this series, but I, I still think for some reason the Blues are, are just going to win this one and kind of squeeze through, but the, you know their likely reward is facing off against the Avs, so if you lose round one, who's actually the, who's the real loser? Because then they have to get uh, attacked and, and probably pieced apart by the Avs. On the other side of the bracket, uh, again, pretty pretty even distribution. You've got Dallas versus Calgary, and Dallas has actually taken a 2-1 to series lead. I had this series as a potential upset because I felt like the Flames encountering a team that's built very similarly and plays very similar hockey to them might cause an issue. Uh, even still, I, I would say that it's not a great reflection on the Flames to find themselves struggling to produce goal-scoring opportunities. I'll say this, Jake Ottinger for the Stars has been brilliant, uh, especially in the past couple of games. But I think for the Flames, they would say it's missed opportunities and some lack of discipline that has put them in a position where they're now down and chasing the series. Is it, you know, out of reach? No, not at all. I, I do think Calgary is going to try and force uh, at least game six. But, you know, the Stars are one of those teams where, um, well, I, I don't think that they are really good enough to make the cup finals like they did a couple of years ago. I still think that they're a decent squad and it wouldn't shock me if Ottinger is able to steal the series and give them the support that they need so that they could kind of, um, maybe squeeze out a few goals here and there, but really shut down Calgary's goal scoring ability. If Ottinger continues to track and be as calm and composed as he's shown monster, monster, uh, goalie performance so far, and maybe enough to turn the tide of the series. Uh, Edmonton LA is a, a, a really strange series. This one, um, the Kings actually, actually just tied it up 2 2. And, you know, after a couple of games in which Edmonton basically just ripped the, uh, the Kings apart, the, uh, the LA Kings actually basically dominated game four. Um, Edmonton, you know, they scored 14, you know, uh, 14 goals across two games and they looked like they were going to run away with the series. But then game four happened and suddenly, the Oilers are starting to look over their shoulder and maybe wondering if they can really rely on Mike Smith and the rest of this Oilers roster to carry them through. 
I think, you know, the Oilers are still going to prevail. I just don't see how the Kings can make it through McDavid, Dreisaitl, Puyayarvi, Yamamoto, even with Mike Smith in it. I still think that this team is good enough. Darnell Nurse has provided, of course, really great back-end offense. Uh, I think it's a mistake to count the Oilers out. But if L.A. does advance, suddenly whoever wins between Calgary and Dallas has a much easier route towards a cup finals appearance. But, you know, then your reward is having to face off against the Avs, right? I think the Avs are most likely going to be the ones that end up in the conference finals. And so (laughs) your reward is to probably lose to a really strong Avs team unless by some miraculous turn of events you survive and, and go on through. Now, that's the Western picture. It's been a little bit complicated. But even still, I think the West is probably not as complicated as the Eastern Conference. We'll talk about the East in just a little bit. But before we go any further, though, I don't want to shout out the wonderful folks at Built Bar. If you know me, I'm a big fan of Built Bars myself. They're the only protein bar that's more like a candy bar with a 100% chocolate exterior and a soft, chewy interior. They've got great flavors like uh, coconut, coconut almond, churro puff. Uh, For me, raspberry dark chocolate is delicious. They've also got banana cream pie. There's such a great variety of flavors, and with summer coming up, you're probably looking for snacks on the go, whether you've got kids who are traveling, uh, or maybe you're at the beach and you want something that's uh, that's going to be body-friendly and make you not feel any sort of guilt. Well, Bill Bar's there for you, and they taste amazing. But most importantly, they're amazing for you. With most Bill Bar's you know, clocking in at around 130 calories, 4 grams of sugar, 4 net carbs, and 17 grams of protein. They're perfect for meal replacements, maybe a pre-workout snack. No matter what you need, Built Bar is there to satisfy your cravings. Placing your order really couldn't be easier. Go to Built.com and be sure to use promo code LOCKED15 for 15% off your order. Again, at checkout, that is promo code LOCKED15 for 15% off at Built.com. Hello, friends, and welcome back to this episode of the Locked on Winnipeg Jets podcast. We are closing out tonight's thoughts on the updates around the uh, the 2022 NHL Stanley Cup playoffs. We've talked about the uh, Western Conference, and now I wanted to talk about the slightly more complicated Eastern picture because I would say for a lot of teams and a lot of fans, there are some series that aren't really going according according to plan. Uh, the biggest surprise right now is you know Washington versus the Florida Panthers. The Caps are up 2-1, and they've actually been outplaying and outscoring the Panthers by a pretty decent margin. I think a lot of folks thought, myself included, that the Caps were going to struggle because, you know, the goaltending just wasn't really there. Ilya Samsonov and Vitek Vanacek, I I didn't really have a lot of confidence in, but thanks to the Caps really being uh, uh, offensively dominant and paving the way forward, I feel like Maybe it's helped out their goaltenders, but honestly, both have been pretty darn good in their respective games. Vanacek had the one bad game against the Panthers, uh, but other than that, I mean, you know, Samsonov and Vanacek have seemingly, I don't know if they're they're going to start alternating or whatever, but it just seems like they might be finding their groove, which would be crucial because the Caps have to, you know, win two more and hopefully grab a, uh, a really important series victory. I'm, I'm rooting for the Caps here because... I do live near D.C. I'm sure a lot of people would rather the Panthers advance, but, you know, I'm all about Team Chaos, and uh, certainly I've got a soft spot for guys like Kuznetsov. Um, But, yeah, you know, a surprising series result so far. We'll see if it holds. The Panthers, I don't really expect to uh, remain this poor. I think they're going to show up in a big way towards the, you know, core of this series. Uh, They might steal another win on the road here and really show the Caps that, you know, counting them out would be a huge mistake. But, um they're not doing as well as their uh, other Florida brethren, I guess you could say. The Tampa Bay Lightning have been alternating really crazy score lines with the Toronto Maple Leafs. Uh, I don't really know what's going on in this series, other than that each team seemingly alternates really great performances with absolute horror shows. Uh, you're, you're looking at it like games in which one team will win 7-1 one day and then lose like 6 nothing the next, and you really have no idea which team is going to show up. So, yeah. This series, absolute coin flip. It's super electrifying for, I guess, neutrals uh, looking at the more holistic picture. But at the game level, it's not been super great because each game is just an utter blowout. And it's been in pretty dominant fashion. So let's hope games five and six uh, are a little bit closer and a little bit more interesting. Because as it is, you might as well just say uh, a 50-50 coin flip for game seven. And I would prefer, I don't know, uh, one of these teams to actually show us 
something a little more. Now, uh, on the other side of the bracket, we've got Carolina versus Boston. Uh, the Bruins have actually just evened this series up in a very big statement win. I think the Bruins, maybe I was a little bit down on them, but I felt like Carolina was still the stronger team. And I think on paper, they still are. It's just the Bruins have found a way to sort of sneak through and continue to take advantage of the Canes maybe being a bit undisciplined. Game four was especially rife with that. A lot of Bruins power plays. And look, the Bruins might be old, but you cannot give them opportunities, especially with savvy guys like Bergeron, Pasternak, uh, Marchand, all very talented and very good at uh, taking advantage of what you give them. So the Canes are going to have to clean it up or they're going to be going home very early. The last series is probably the hardest one to call. This is Pittsburgh versus the Rangers, and I feel like the Pens for me, even though I can't really call this series, I still think the Pens prevail, but they've had some really crazy injuries. They've lost their starting goalies. Uh, it's now down to Louis Domingue and what remains of the, that top six to really carry through against a pretty deep Rangers squad, even if the Rangers are maybe not defensively great and still have... Um, well, I guess some issues with Shesterkin recently. He hasn't been nearly as dominant as he was in the regular season. Not super shocking. The other Rangers off uh, Rangers defense is not exactly coding itself in glory. But yeah, uh, you know the, the Pens are are currently up two one, and if they win the third game, it's going to be really or the fourth game, it's going to be really really tough for the Rangers to claw back into this. I think you know Pittsburgh has basically outplayed the Rangers almost every night. And unless the Rangers can really turn things around, they're going to be going home early. And I wouldn't be shocked to see the Pens give whoever emerges between Carolina and Boston absolute fits. I'd be curious to know what you think of the first round and what you think of the series so far. Be sure to let me know at HLivingLoco and at LO underscore Winnipeg Jets. It's been pretty crazy in my opinion, but maybe you are disappointed by it. Or if you're like me and really excited, tell me who you've been watching and who you're rooting for right now. You can tell me on Twitter at HLivingLoco and at LO underscore Winnipeg Jets. Maybe I'll include your thoughts on a future playoff episode of Locked On Jets. For tonight's episode, though, that is going to be all the time that we have. Thank you for choosing to make Locked On Jets your first listen of the day every day. Throughout the rest of the week, we'll continue to give you playoff updates, whether it's the Moose, hopefully, or the uh, NHL clubs out there. It's going to be a crazy playoff run. I'm excited, and I really hope that uh, the Moose don't crap out early and give me something to talk about so that, you know, us Jets fans can still be excited and engage in the playoff talk without having the Jets actually in it. Um, but while you're at it, you know, you, you want to make your second listen locked on NHL. This is a great way to keep up with all of the first round matchups to each Stanley Cup kiss, uh, you know, from front to back. You know, locked on NHL covers the playoffs like no one else. Hear the latest news and opinions from local experts every Monday through Friday. So you'll always stay on the loop of all of these great series and get even deeper insight into what's happening throughout the entire 2022 NHL playoffs. It's free and available wherever you get your favorite podcasts, so be sure to like, follow, and subscribe right now. And as always, thank you so much for listening. Have a great night, and go Jets go!